the max stabbing trial. They're happening on Wednesday and ahead of that we kind of want to step back a bit and reframe how we're talking about this case because since the stabbings happened, we've shown you these photos a lot. That's Jeremy Christian, the defendant on the left. Then you see the three men he stabbed and has admitted to stabbing. Ricky Best and Talesian Namkai Meche in the middle both died. Micah Fletcher on the right survived. Their names, their faces have become synonymous with that deadly attack in 2017. Tonight, though, we want to show you four more faces. That's Walia Muhammad, Destiny Mangum, Sean Ford, and Demetria Hester. Walia and Destiny were the two teenage girls Christian's accused of targeting with a racist rant on that train. Ford is the retired Marine who stepped in to block Christian's view of the girls. And Hester is the woman he's accused of attacking the night before. Four innocent people, four people of color, whose lives were changed drastically that day by a self-proclaimed white supremacist. And to that point, communities of color here in Portland are watching this case very closely. We want to bring in Maggie Vespa now. And this is something that people have been paying attention to from the time the stabbing happened. And then it seemed to really come back again over the past few weeks of this trial. 100%. So actually, we're not allowed to film in the hallways of the courthouse. But on day one of this trial, I was in the hallway of the courthouse right outside the courtroom when I saw a woman named Teresa Rayford. And we know her here at KGW. She's an advocate for Portland's African American community, and she was there to support Support Walia and Destiny as they were among the first to take the stand. And she's been watching the case ever since. And it turns out she's far from the only one. He was saying Muslims, saying go back to Saudi Arabia. On day one of the deadly Max Stabbings trial, we saw strength through tears. This made me feel like, why? Like, there's no reason. Destiny Mangum and Walia Muhammad were among the first witnesses to take the stand. Off camera, Teresa Rayford watched. The black community has watched this play out generation after generation. Rayford is head of Don't Shoot PDX and a vocal advocate for her hometown's African American community. That day, she came to court to support the two black girls terrified by a self described white supremacist. I wanted people. Um, that were showing up, their grandparents, their aunts, their family members, them, um, to see that they are being supported by the community that stands up for black lives. Rayford also showed up for Demetria Hester, the woman who testified Christian attacked her the night before the stabbings. She said he threw a Gatorade bottle at her face after yelling things like that he was a Nazi and that he hated all Muslim blacks, Jews and wanted to kill them. Hester called police, but Christian ran off that night and no one tracked him down. Her testimony came a couple of days after Sean Ford's. The retired Marine was the first person who tried to get Christian to calm down as he ranted about race and religion on the day of the stabbings. He stepped between Christian and the girls and said he expected Christian to call him the N-word. I just wanted him to focus on me. That's it. That's, that's all I could think of was I didn't want him to focus on him anymore. After several minutes of ranting, Christian admits he stabbed three other men who either intervened or stood nearby. Ricky Best and Talesian Numkai Meche died. Micah Fletcher survived. It happened in May of 2017. Christian has pleaded not guilty by reason of mental disease or defect. Rayford has a hard time with that. When you see a black person on media or any kind of publication um, and we're talking about crime, we don't defend them with mental illness. Uh, we don't defend them with PTSD. We don't defend them with a hardship. We talk about the violence and the attributes of that violence and how it's a concern for all of us to be safe. Someone else who has trouble stomaching that defense is Zakir Khan. He's the spokesperson for the Portland chapter of the Council on American Islamic Relations, or CARE, and he's been watching this case closely too because on the day of the stabbings, Walia was wearing a hijab. In court, she testified she's too afraid to wear it anymore. So I think Muslim women across the country, this is a decision that they unfortunately are having to make. Um, that, you know, do they need to take steps to do what's needed to feel safe? Now, days from deliberations, Khan says Portland's Muslim community is watching closely. The district attorney's job has done a really great job of letting people have space to tell their stories. And my worry is that we will emerge from this trial and we will not fix any of those systems so that these things will continue to happen and survivors will continue to not be supported and be believed. Yeah, they are watching this really closely. Interesting note, by the way, about CARE that Khan reminded me of is that the Portland chapter of CARE 
was actually in the works. It wasn't up and running yet when the stabbings happened, but when they did, the national board got on the phone when they heard about Walia having worn the hijab on the train and said, you clearly need to get this going because the Muslim community needs a voice in Portland. So they did. Three years later, here we are. So let's talk about the trial now, which yeah. uh, again could go to the jury this week, but we've already seen some scheduling changes so far. Yeah, just over the last day or so, we were supposed to go into uh, closing arguments as soon as tomorrow. But remember, there are 12 counts in this case. So lawyers from both sides said they needed more time to come up with jury instructions and really hammer that out and give jurors a clear path forward as far as the charges they have to decide on. So they postponed closing arguments one more day. We'll have those on Wednesday, and then this will go to the jury for deliberations. This will be a very busy week for this trial. If you have any questions, things you've been wondering since the beginning, reach out to Maggie. You can yeah. also reach out to us here. Use the hashtag HeyDan. Maggie, thank you. Sure.